Hello and welcome to this guide to adding a simple one-to-one -one transaction. Before you start, whatever you're going to conduct the one-to-one -one transaction with needs to be added as an asset to the PS Assets system. For example, if you're going to loan a laptop to someone, the laptop needs to be added as an asset to your PS Assets system. Go to one-to-one, one-to-one -to -one manager, and search for your asset in the search for an asset box. If you can find the asset in the list, press on the title of the asset. If you can't, press the click here for all search results button. Find your asset in the table and press view. You can then check if it's the correct asset with the details given and then search for the contact you're going to conduct the transaction with. If the contact isn't in your system already, you can add them in the Add New Contact section with their email address and name. Alternatively, if you can, press on their name to move to the transaction screen. Here we have the contact information and asset information. Please check both are correct. One-to-one -one key dates can be added here. These are expected return dates and next action dates. If you want to add a key date, either type it in the box or select it from the calendar. Once done, press the update button to save it. Transaction information shows you any previous transactions for this asset. In this case, there aren't any. Now you can add your transaction. If you need to set a date and time that aren't the current date and time, you can do so here. Current asset status is the current status for the asset. This can be changed here at the same time as adding the transaction so that you don't have to do it as a separate step later on. Type sets the transaction type that is taking place. This allows you to report on and track transactions by the type of transaction they are. Value enables you to enter a cost associated with the transaction. This is optional. Description allows you to enter details to do with the transaction, asset or contact. It's a good idea to enter any relevant details here because they can be very useful when reviewing transactions later. Under Terms and Conditions Templates, select the relevant terms and conditions for the transaction. Once everything is in place, press the Add Transaction button. Then with the contact, check the contact information is correct, the asset information is correct, that the transaction details are correct and that they're happy to comply with any terms and conditions. Then ask them to sign in the box. In PS Assets Online, as we are right now, the contact can hold down the left mouse key and move the mouse to sign. If the contact makes a mistake when signing, you can press clear, to clear the signature and start again. You have two options to complete the transaction. The complete transaction and email receipt button completes the transaction and emails the contact their receipt. The complete transaction button completes the transaction but no receipt is emailed to the contact. Once the transaction is complete, this will then take you back to the transaction screen. Here we can again see the contact information, asset information and any key dates that have been added. Under transaction information we can see all the transactions that have taken place for this asset. We can then view the receipt print it, download it as a PDF, email it to the contact or change the email address and email it to an address where it can be stored. 
You can also find one-to-one -one details if you go into the Assets Edit Assets screen and scroll down. Here, a one-to-one -one section has been added to the asset. This does not exist for assets that have had no one-to-one -one transactions placed against them. Under this one-to-one -one section, we can see the details of the most recent transactions for the asset and the stage they are at. For full details, press the Full Details link. If you have any questions or if we can help, please contact us on 0114 or email us at psassets at psfinancials.com.